<clears throat> okay guys welcome to um, the next installment of phase three in this video we're going to essentially cover um, inefficiency and just like a sponsored candle an inefficiency can be mitigated but I don't really like to call it a mitigation even though it technically is I don't know it's just me but you can um, very much so call you know the accounting of an inefficiency to be also be considered a mitigation because in the end of the day it's all order flow um, and that's, you know, obviously the next video, but um, I took a, a kind of a different approach with understanding inefficiencies. Um, what I did with inefficiencies is I wanted to apply a, uh, a lot of the finance side, a lot of the macro side, um, which I believe is a great foundation to understand the concept. Um, and yeah, so essentially what you see on screen, right, right, you see your price and your quantity essentially your supply and demand curves, um, P1, Q1, right, matches equilibrium, right? We want price to remain at equilibrium in order to maintain a fair price delivery. What do I mean by that? I mean, in order for, you know, trends to continue, right, they obviously have to correct. Um, so if you ever see a slippage, right, oh, and that, you don't even have to call it a slippage, you can just call it a um, sudden volatility come in you'll pretty much um, see that imbalance, right? That inefficiency, that, that, that point, which is not equilibrium, right? Now, just depending on, on whether it's on the sell side or the buy side, right? Determines with what exactly you're talking about, with, whether that's a shortage or surplus. Okay, now what do I mean by that? <clears throat> okay, so looking at excess supply, right? Essentially, what I mean with excess supply is when you have a, a big sell-off, right? Excess supply, right? Um, demand, right? Pretty much you buy demand, you sell supply. Uh, just easiest way to put that. Uh, so when you have excess supply, you have a slippage, you have an excessive amount of selling uh, momentum, selling volatility, however you want to call it, right? Which is a result of P2, Q2, and Q3, right? So notice that naturally we aren't at equilibrium anymore, but because we have excess supply, we now have we we now have something that we call a surplus, right? So how do you fix that surplus, right? Yeah, that means you now need the inverse, which is a shortage, right, to bring price back to equilibrium, okay? And the inverse of that would be excess demand. Um, excess demand, right? That just means a slippage to the upside and a excessive volatility to the upside, right? So naturally, right, you get P two Q two Q three again. Right, but except now it's below equilibrium here, and that is considered a shortage. Right, so to counteract a shortage, right, you need to stimulate it with surplus to bring it back into equilibrium. Okay, so I'm pretty sure a lot of you are going to be extremely confused about what I just said. Right, so let let me try to break it down into actual terms. This is more so just for you to define the concept to understand the concept from a macro perspective, um, but. You know, now trying to apply it to market concepts. Okay, we have excess supply and we have excess demand, right? Like I said, we have balanced price action, right? Because we have a sell off and we have a buy, and you know, price is healthy, right? That's the easiest way to put it. Price is healthy. But when you see an excessive move to the downside or upside, that is considered an inefficiency, right? So naturally, right, like we said here, an excess supply requires a shortage right, to recover price, to balance it out, to then continue fair delivery, balanced delivery. Okay, now, so the other side, right, balanced price action to the upside, right, uh, natural order flow, right, now we have a shortage of demand, making, you know, the price uh, exponentially grow. Um, so naturally, in order to counteract that, you need a surplus to stimulate the market to, once again, bring about balance, right, so once that balance is achieved right you now have balanced delivery to the upside okay so now that you understand the macro perspective you now understand the drawings perspective right you now want to know how to apply it into your charts <clears throat> right so just like a sponsored candle right you see this occur um, on any time frame and it's it, it obviously varies um, in terms of if you see a inefficiency on one time frame, you may not see it on another, and I'm gonna come back to that. But anyways, before that, right, 
what did we just cover in the previous image, right? We see a shortage, which causes excessive um, demand to appear itself, right? So, right, you see that here, right? You see that excessive amount of demand, right? Which causes the slippage, right? So naturally price has to rebalance itself before it continues, right? So just like a sponsored candle, you need, uh, or you prioritize that 50%, but you can also very much see the fulfillment, right? Is there a preferred? No, right? It really just depends on the period trading, on the time frame that it, that the inefficiency is on, and whether confluences um, realigns with it, right? Because for example, if you have a push down here, right? Let's say this is a quote unquote uh, two hour time frame sponsored candle, and we now have that bullish move to the upside, and now maybe this could be a mitigation here. Right, what that now that realigns with the inefficiency in place, right? You now want that 50%, obviously, because it matches that, but you can also very well see that. So, it's not about exactly what point you're using, it's about the reaction that's given so that then you can make plays based off it, right? AKA educated decisions. Um, so, does an inefficiency have to fulfill itself? No, right? But for the most part, I won't take an action if I don't see at least 50%, right? If I see like just the, the open be tapped, then I'm not gonna be really too interested. Um, just because of personal experiences, I haven't seen much success trying to trade in that manner, right? Um, and you can usually have that rebalance occur, right? Just like let's say here, for example, right? Um, so you see how the inefficiency is from wick to wick and you see that slippage. I like to see this be one candle, not multiple candles. Right, so just like here, you see that a, a quote unquote slippage here, right, with no wicks covering itself, right, where you have the 50% left over, you have the fulfillment left over, right. So just because we didn't immediately tap it doesn't mean we're not going to tap it in the long run, right. And so at first, right, you're going to notice a lot of these, right, just like you see here, right, and in, inefficient in, in price action is then fulfilled um, immediately, right. So I just like to play, you know, after. The inefficiency is left over and i then have a reason to play towards it or play against it right by that i mean this could have easily reversed here right as you can see here right we even caused a reaction right but just because pois give reactions does not mean they get follow-throughs which which is why you care for that confluence aspect that <clears throat> essentially gives you you know that comfortability to want to execute that trade um so as you can see here, right, you know, I tap the open then left, right? That means I'm not too interested. There's still inefficient pricing left over here. So naturally, as you can see, right, you now have the break of structure, right? You have a potential SC on a bigger time frame. You now align that, I'm sorry, you now align that with the 50%, right? Which is relatively where it is, right? And you can easily zoom in here and find any type of minor break of structure, uh, micro break of structure, scalping break of structure, and then make plays based on that. And you can be a lot more conservative because now after this reaction, you don't have a narrative to play off of. You have your break of structure, you have a potential higher time frame SC, you have your 50% inefficiency, you have the reaction, you have a lot of confluence to give that move to the upside. So now it's just about finding the best entry for you to get that higher RR, okay? <clears throat> so, right, just like here, USD CAD, Right. Notice this first example was on an intraday time frame. Now notice we are in a scalping time frame. Um, as you can see here, wick to wick, you can easily see the fact that we have that inefficiency covered right after we essentially broke a structure point here. Right. Um, and the reason why I call that a structure point is because this low created that high. Right. That was broken. Price naturally came back, fulfilled that inefficiency right gave a scalping break of structure even gave another pullback here and then created that lower low sorry guys i just sneezed um so right you have that scalping break of structure here right you now have that push down pullback continuation lower to aim for liquidity right like we covered previously in this section um and then guess what after that Right, the liquidity was cleared we did not create an overall new low right as you can see here right so what happens this could have potentially taken that liquidity and then gave that immediate structure break and now that's your liquidity grab which incites that bullish movement 
okay so right just trying to connect um, so far what we've talked about um, and now as for our final example right this is now USD JPY on the daily time frame right as you can see here right you have a daily inefficiency but you also have an H12 inefficiency right so you're gonna tell me why is this right here not an inefficiency okay well like we said I like it to be one candle it is on this candle right but <clears throat> once we zoom in right you can see here that it's not just one candle so there's a higher possibility that this is actually structured movement inside of these three candles right whereas here you can see it's a legitimate slippage to the upside right so price naturally comes back to fill that right and then you now have another inefficiency here which isn't shown there but it was still fulfilled in the long run so how do you know which time frame to play off of you don't right plain fact you, you don't know okay um, and the best thing that you can do is focus on your controllable aspects and use that to your advantage right it's not about me trying to sell into a POI it's about me using the POIs to build a narrative to build a case that will give me a favorable outcome right so although that's not necessarily the topic of this video I felt like it was necessary right because you never know what kind of POI will hit, will hit Right, but that's why we're gonna talk about order flow in the uh, next video, and you know, hopefully that clears a lot up. But at the end of the day, the only way you're gonna know if whether or not a POI is valid is after doing extensive research, back testing, stress testing, and understanding your pair, understanding the time you're trading, right, and just a bunch more other um, controllable aspects. Okay, so other than that, right, um, I don't think I gave you a raw definition. Um, for inefficiency so just call it <clears throat> I mean there really isn't a real definition from what you know from what I have in my notes right but just keep in mind that the market revolves around balance we've we brought that up in previous videos right so when you're looking for an inefficiency look for that strong momentum that strong volume right because if that strong volume sustains itself right and continues and doesn't just immediately come back and create a large wick um, down the road that could be a potential point of interest so now you just have to um <clears throat> now you just have to um, consider your structure consider your other pois consider your um time of day you know just other controllable aspects like we talked about right and finally right your optimal entries or your optimal points of interest are 50 percent and the fulfillment right so just seeing inefficient pricing as a type of void that is supported by an impulsive move. Okay, so I guess I'll leave it at that and I'll see you guys in the next video.